G'day YouTube, my name's Lance. Welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, the weather report, 13 to 23. Um, they say there's a chance of a shower today. There's, oh, there's a smidgen of cloud out there at the moment, but yeah, not too much. Um, it's looking pretty good, really. Um, might be a good day to sit out the front and work on that little Ford a little bit. We'll just see, see what the weather does for us. Um, I've been sort of, tinkering around with that late of an afternoon just to try and get it to run uh, I'll get it up to where I can run it and see if I need to order parts so I've been putting a little bit of time into it look not much um, I just haven't had much time this week to um, to get organized um, yeah last last weekend after the stew on the Monday um, you might remember I've been working on a an old 1929 farm or regular engine and uh, when I say working on it, well, that's a bit of a stretch. Um, I've been doing absolutely jack shit, really. <coughs> Pardon me. But when I was pressure, well, when I was sandblasting the pistons, we found a crook piston in it, and um, we'd already bought a heap of parts over from America for it. And my old mate John Dudley owns it, and um, talking to him the other day, and he said, "Oh, how are we going with that engine?" And I said, "Well, we still haven't found a piston." And um, at the Farmall get together, the 100 years of Farmall in Inverell, New South, he was going to chat to all the Farmall blokes there, but he got talking and that excited down there, buggering around, having a nice time, he forgot. And um, I said, how'd you go with that piston? Oh, shit, he says. I was too busy chatting to think about that. So anyway, so a fella come in at work and we think a 1020 piston, a McCormick Deering 1020 piston will fit. So a fella come in at work and he reckoned he had some and he'd go and have a look and get back to us. and. Um, I've been waiting for him to come back and waiting and um, I ended up getting his phone number and I've left a message for him but I just haven't heard back at all so we don't know what's happening there. But um, anyway, Russell from um, Wondai, um, he's possibly got some out there. So JD and Russell are chatting about pistons and things like that, see if they can, um, see if there's something there. But so I sort of wrapped it up, wrapped up what I'd done, like I've got the crank in and the, um, I've machined up parts for the belt tensioner and things like that. But um, once we couldn't find pistons, I started on the pistons and once we couldn't find a piston, I just wrapped it up and shelved it for a while. But i um, talking to him the other day and there's a chance we can get a piston. And um, yeah, so we, I thought, well, I'll put a few hours into it. So if the piston turns up, I'm ready to rock and roll. But with the, with the con rods, whoop, with the con rods, they're heavy old cast pistons, but um, they're shim adjustable. So you get, you get a, a cap and to adjust the clearance, you either add or remove shims. And um, one of them, the other day, I spent about half a day on one con rod and I just, I'm looking at the marks down the side and I lined them up and I didn't mark the engine when I pulled it apart because it had marks on it. And I thought, oh, they're good, oh, that's, that's okay. And um, anyway, what's happened is <laughs> the one con rod I had one, two, three, four down here, one, two, three, four there, yet when you turned the cap around the other side, there was one, two, three, four there. So, because <laughs> uh, I was putting shims in and putting shims in and I'm thinking, this isn't bloody right. And um, I'm pulling them out again and got the, dial gauge there and I'm measuring and um, what had happened is yeah I was the piston was round the wrong way on the cap and so once I got that sorted out and I used a different set of marks oh I went in I pulled a heap of shims out I got about oh look it, it, it's a it, it's a drip feed system so um, it, it's got an oil manifold where it squirts oil towards the conrod and as the conrod comes down it squirts on this little tit yeah have I got one? No, I haven't got one just sitting there to show you really. Um, and the other ones are in. Um, but yeah, this little thing, it squirts oil on there and that goes up. So um, you need a little bit more clearance than you might have for others. But um, when we got the engine, one of those conrod ends had just rotted away. We don't know what was in it, but the whole cap and all had rotted away. So it took us ages to find a um, conrod for it. And Tommy Hall would 
I think in the end from Inverell Rural Wrecking, um, he went through his stuff and found one. And so we'd have a, we have the Conrod now, but we're waiting on a piston. <laughs> so it's been drawn out. Look, it must have been in my shed for two years if it's been a day, I reckon. But um, yeah, it's just trying to find parts for it and things like that and waiting on people to get back. Then like JD forgot to look for one. Then I tried to get onto this bloke and I've been rang him and I, I sort of thought I'd be polite and just wait for him to get back. And that, that was a few months worth. And um, so, yeah, I've left message on his phone and that, but nothing's come back. So, um, so anyway, the other day I thought, well, I'd sit and I'd get some of that done and get the Conrods redone. And then once I've got the Conrods all shimmed to the flywheel or to the crank correctly, well, once we get a piston, it's just bang in and we're, we're away. Um, you know, I've, I've done the, I've got the, I've got to assemble the head, but I've done the valves and um, I've done the seats and all that sort of thing. So I've got a lot of stuff ready to go and cleaned and all that. But um, yeah, we've just been waiting on this. So I thought, well, I'm busy bloke and there's no use putting time into that when there's not much chance of something coming in the near future. But um, last Monday, yeah, it was a bit of a cold, windy, shitty day. And um, the bloody wind blowing, <laughs> yeah, um, was unreal. So I thought, well, I'll just sit inside and do that for the morning. So, um, but yeah, it took me four hours on one. Then it took me about an hour and a half to do the other two. And that was just taking my time. So. So I'll tell you a bit of a picture of that later when we have the walk around video. Um, another couple of things happened. Um, you'll see LSA on the sign up here. Um, we had a chat to LSA Oils. It was due time to renew sponsorships and talk about those deals. And LSA are back on with, well, not back on, they're still with us for the next year. Um, yeah, and look, it's a, it's a, Good little deal for them. Um, you know, I get 44, a 44 gallon drum of oil for the tractors every year and a few bits, drums of degreaser and um, that's it and that's all I need. Yeah, so, um, and I like their product. Like we sell it at work. It's the only one we sell and we've been selling it for many, many years now. Um, there's only two in town. We sell it in Toyota parts. Um, there's a business in town and um, Tantitha spare parts and they sell like Toyota aftermarket parts for Land Cruisers and things like that, and um, they sell it as well. So, so we get on. We don't um, have price wars or anything. We just sell the stuff, and um, yeah, away we go. But they've got some really good oils, like the the um, the Diesel Max that I put in the Land Cruiser. It's good stuff, I reckon. And the Farm Oil 1540 that I run in just about every diesel tractor on the property gets Farm Oil in the back end and in the engine. Um, it gets 85, 140 in final drives and things, but um, so yeah, it's good to have them on. We use their grease all the time as well. Um, we use the CRC grease, so yeah, we try and be fair with our sponsors and, and go there. Um, so yeah, that was good. Um, I got a box of spare parts for the Ford 2000 um, through the week. Um, a new steering wheel, a muffler, um, oh, the grills. And people are saying, oh, watch the grills, they're not much good. And look, they're, they're going to do the job, okay, but um, you can see where they've painted them. Like, they've got the grey on the outside and they paint the blue, they just go, Shh, and there's overspray all on the inside and that. So um, I'm going to probably deal with that in a, separately. I'll, I'll repaint them. And <laughs> pardon me, that um, Rich was saying that... Um, yeah, check the, the letters and all that. And look, they're not too bad, um, but whether I fix the old one or do the other one, I, I don't know, we'll work that out. There's way more to do before we have to worry about that part of it. <coughs> um, but um, yeah, some parts came and um, I, I fitted the Welsh plugs one afternoon and I put the inlet manifold and the water manifold and all that on, that was just bolting it on in the carb. And yeah, I didn't film any of that. I was oh, just bloody sitting it on doing a couple of bolts up. So it wasn't that interesting. Um, this morning, I'm trying to get all the little loose bits buttoned up. So if we get a bit of bad weather, it doesn't matter. But it's been a part that long that every hole I'm coming to, like along the manifold and for the fuel pump down on the timing cover there, um, every bolt hole's got wasps nest in it. And so I've got to clean them and blow them and all that, so it takes a while, but that's fine. Um, 
yeah, we we poking along with it. Um, yeah, sort of been enjoying it. I haven't done the boards for the carry all yet. I just just no time, and um, yeah, it, we'll get there. Right, eh? it's not a race. Um, the excitement for the week, and this had me wagging me tail. I tell you, um, my mate Rich, that I've spoken about a few times on the channel now. Um, we um, with the Massey 20 bonnet. Um, he had something coming for me, and what it was was the correct emblem for the top of the grill, and that turned up through the week, and I was tickle pink with that. Thanks again, Rich. I'll be messaging him, but thanks again. And, and look, it's the right patina for the tractor, you know. Like it just looks um, it's the right patina. Then behind it, it had a they had like a backing plate. So not only is he giving me the the medallion that I'd like that I'd like on a tractor, he's had a laser cut stainless steel plate for behind it. So that's sort of what it looks like on the yeah, but I think you can see that. That's what it looks like on the front of the tractor. Then what I'm going to do, I've got this stone, this um, alloy bar and the holes don't line up, but that's not going to be a problem. I own a drill. So I'm going to make that line up and it's going to have the, the alloy front bar with the nice new emblem or medallion on the front. And that'll really finish it off. That'll make it look nice. I've still got work to do on it, but I've just been bouncing around um, Try, trying to get things done. I'm trying to get that bloody Ford that's been sitting out there for years, for ages anyway, it, um, running so I can get it in the shed. So I've prioritised that just for the moment, um, see if I can get it in out of the weather. And um, once I can start that engine, um, I can then know what I need to do. Like, um, we don't know as a clutch stuck from sitting as um, the gearbox you know, hadn't got knock knocks in it, um, do the hydraulics work, um, things like that. We don't know what we've got. So I've been trying to put a little bit of time into that engine of an afternoon just to get it running. But I will get back into this um, as soon as I as soon as I can. And um, yeah, we'll get this done and that bonnet finished. And I've got another couple of little jobs to do on the Massey 20 um, before I get there. And, and the jobs like last weekend wasn't very good for painting. And um, so I do need to sand the headlights and because the, hand, the headlights were yellow, not silver. Um, the stabiliser bars I've had on the mudguard sitting there for a while, they're red. They need to go yellow. The paint's pretty good. It's not perfect yellow, but it'll, it'll blend in in time. Um, so we do have some painting. I, I sort of got half organised for paint, but um, I couldn't quite get there with it. Um, I had run out of paint cups, you know the paint cups, just hang on, yeah I had run out of paint cups for mixing the paint and I don't know how many of you have used these, come out of there. That seems to be stuck pretty well, there we go. So um, last time the, the last batch of these paint cups I had, um, they were one litre ones, and I often only used so much in the bottom, you know. So I thought I'd try the 600 mil ones this time, which is about a pint, and they give you a graduation. They give you graduations on the side, but then they give you the ratios for mixing. That's a bit hard for you to see there. Um, these are very thin in the wall, but they are disposable. Like, <clears throat> I bought, um, I think I bought 200 of them for $70, so, um, but yeah, I, I like to mix the paint in that, and you can mix it up and stir it up, and, and if I'm doing a full chassis, the litre size was good, um, I could mix up a litre, and that would give me a couple of pots of paint to get around the whole show, and away we went, but I may even buy some litre ones later. These are very thin in the walls, but yeah, they're not made to... <clears throat> I mean, they're not made to last forever, but I use them for all sorts of things. Uh, <coughs> I mean, a bit of a frog in my throat. Um, yeah, so I've got the paint cups, and um, I'm sort of all ready to go. Once the, um, once the weather tidies up, I've just got to do a bit of light sanding on those bits and get a bit of paint on. But 
Um, with the weather last weekend and that, well, yeah, we didn't didn't get to that last Monday at all. Um, so I just worked on that engine because it was a shit day outside. So anyway, um, the other excitement for the week is talking to Sparex, and they said, oh, we've got a new range of lights of, um, of beacons. Um, can we send you a couple? And they said, oh, it'll cost you a few bucks just to get them there and that. And I said, yeah, send them up. So look at the size of that. Tiny little thing. And this is the one that has got a long, long lead on it. And this is the one that goes into your ciggy lighter, your cigarette lighter plug. And the switch is on there for on off. Um, I've had a play with it outside on the Land Cruiser. Uh, they are bright. And yeah, like for tractor tracking and things like that. Um, what I'm going to do with this one, um, I, I don't have a cigarette lighter um, adapter on my tractor. Now, some tractors did, um, like me John Deere. Um, they come out with a cigarette lighter plug on it, but um, um, a lot of them don't. But I'm going to um, you know, put this in a little in the toolbox or something like that. And if I have a light failure somewhere, um, or someone else does, we'll get a we'll get a little ciggy plug on a couple of jumper leads on a, on a couple of alligator clips and put it there. But it is bright. But and the other one they sent was this little fella here. Now. That's a tiny little thing. Bright as bright. Um, now, John Deere used these on their tractors. And um, so they, these are a replacement for the Johnnies. Um, yeah, they, they seem to be selling them, um, selling them like buggery. They, they're quite expensive, but they seem to be selling an awful lot of them. <laughs> Talking to Lockie, Lachlan Kemp the other day, he works for Isis Sugar. Um, I reckon sometimes the John Deere's with these things, they get them off and they put Narva ones on. Um, these don't last that well, but, well, not the Sparex ones, the John Deere ones, but Sparex actually have a video out on these. If you go to the Sparex channel, they have a video where they run over them and all that, so I'm not sure. But anyway, what I'm going to do, I told Sparex um, what I would do when we go up to the Queensland Heritage Rally, which is two weeks away, um, I'm going to take the Sparex the big original dome type one off the back and I'm going to put this one on and um, yeah we'll give it a run we'll, we'll put it on the yeah a bit's high enough yeah um, we'll put this on the tractor and um, it'll wobble and bounce around on the trailer getting up there then when we're up there doing street parades or whatever we get up to up there um, we'll test it out so this little one will get a good test um, this other little one um, August August 20, the weekend of August 24, we're having a tractor trek up in Bundy here. And um, yeah, we're going up on Friday up to Mullet Creek, which is where the club's got a shed 50 k's north of here. And um, yeah, we're going to camp there and, and do a run through Robbie's farm and have a look at the museum sheds and um, go up to Winfield and all that. Um, tear us around the countryside on our tractors. So. I think it might be 60 k's one day and 20, 30 the next on the Sunday and then come home. I think they're the figures, but don't quote me. But um, yeah, look, if you, if you want to come on the tractor trek and you're around the Bundaberg area, um, you just need a registered tractor. A registered tractor, it's 50 bucks a head and the club's putting on all the meals, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner and all that sort of thing and a place to camp and with uh, toilets and showers and all that sort of thing. So if you want to come along, um, you need to let us know and um, I can put you in contact with Alan or Peter or Renee or someone and um, yeah, get your booking in, but yeah, we'll need it pretty soon. Um, but yeah, that'll be a great fun thing. So we're just going to take the 35, well, 135 up with the, I might even have my bloody flash fashion light on. Ha, who knows? Um, the other reason we didn't get any work done in the shed is that the club had a meeting at Gainda over the weekend. And um, yeah, we went, see, well, we, have, we have about 100 members in the club and they range from Harvey Bay down south, Meribah Harvey Bay area, um, through Bundaberg, up north to probably Calliope, Gladstone. We have members there and 
We have other members out in Gainda, Gainda area. So um, they're painting uh, the Pensioners League Hall where we normally have our meetings in Bundaberg behind the post office. Um, they're painting that. So um, the club's had a thing about, you know, they try and get to different areas and so all the members don't have to travel all the time. So this last weekend um, we visited Gainda and oh, look, it was great. Yeah, Jude and myself and Nevy and Margaret, President Nevy and Margaret, um, we went out there on the Saturday and yeah, once we got there, we booked into the motel and Russell come and got us, Russell Kemp. And um, the Kemp family, they're, they're our members out there and there's Mick, um, Mick that does the Magnetos. <laughs> um, I can't remember his last name, but I was chatting to him yesterday for a bloody hour, I reckon. <laughs> um, yeah, Mick and um, Mick Doyle. And um, yeah, so we had members out there. So um, we went out there and um, yeah, Russell come and grab, Ru Russell and Lachlan grabbed Jude and myself and chucked us in the ute and we went up to McConnell's Lookout. Then we went over to the Railway Museum which um, Russell and the kids have been involved with and the boys have been involved with for, oh buddy, must be, well they must be a long time, there's Russell, Cindy and the three boys and they're talking about when the kids were at primary school doing things and the kids are off, they're, they're doing their trades now and um, so yeah, that was good to see through that, Sunlander carriages, I've never been in a Sunlander carriage and um, yeah, they're pretty fancy, would have been fancy in the day, um, yeah, very nice and yeah, then we went up to Brussels Shed and had a look at his collection and yeah, we, I don't know how long we were there chatting, but we were chatting for quite a while and um, looking at all these tractors and things. I didn't get the camera out because um, they took cars over and yeah, Nevy and Margaret and one of the boys was in one car and so there was three cars driving around and um, yeah, so I went up there and had a look at Russell's toys and trinkets. I didn't get the camera out though, we were just talking and um, Russell and myself ended up wandering off around the back sheds and all that and um, yeah the ladies were all standing out the front and probably waiting on us but they weren't whinging so that was good yeah um, so that was great then um, yeah we went out for dinner at the pub and um, yeah had a nice meal there and a couple of beers and a, a bottle of grape juice and um, well I, I had some red wine I hadn't drunk for weeks and weeks and weeks like um, May May would have been the last time I had a beer and um, yeah, anyway, I had a couple of beers and a bottle of red and that was good, yeah, full of vitamins and minerals it was. And um, yeah, next day, or oh, Sunday, yesterday, um, the Gainda Museum was open for their open day. They have an open day where they steam up and they run the sawmill, the um, steam powered sawmill with the old saw that goes up and down, not the, um, not the circular saw. And um, they run that and we walk through the engines and tractors and all the bits and pieces there and out the back and in the buildings. And they put on a lovely smoke -o for us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, lovely cups of tea and tables full of bloody cakes and biscuits and things like that. It was great. Um, but yeah, then about 11 o'clock, 11.30, we went up to the school. Oh, the afternoon before, um, Russell took us up to school and, and um, he does the manual arts. And so, yeah, we went through the school manual arts centre. Um, yeah, look, they got little lathes and milling machines and yeah, I could play up there for days. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of toys up there. And um, it's good that the kids can actually do manual arts and um, like they have welding bays, they have a few welding bays. They have like guillotine, pan brakes, um, um, band saws, uh, milling machine, um, drill, you know, big gearhead drill, um, a few lathes, then a woodworking section with band saws and uh, with um, um, table saws and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it was well worth a look. The kids are lucky to have that facility. Um, I, I don't believe a lot of schools probably have that nowadays, but um, the gain to kids, um, yeah, they're quite fortunate to be able to do that. That was the only thing worth doing at school, really, I thought. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> so we went there and then up at uh, the school opened up the um, staff room for us and we had our meeting, our, just our general meeting up there. So, um, yeah, then the Kemp family, thanks again, Russell, Cindy and the boys. Um, yeah, it was great. They put on lunch and all and we had a cuppa and a yarn and, um, yeah, Jude and I, 
come home the back road through the dirt, Mount Perry. We went over through that way, then we went to Paradise Am. It's a two hour trip and took us four hours getting there because we were snooping. <laughs> and then um, coming home, yeah, we hot footed at home through the dirt just because we had, we'd missed a section of road. And um, we hot footed it through the dirt and it was only about two hours home. So it was good. So we got back yesterday and by the time you get back and you tidy up and um, with a bit of dirt, oh, just, just not, not even showers, just drizzle out there. Um, the roads were damp enough that the cars ahead of you on the road were putting up a dirt, so the windscreen was filthy. Um, so yeah, this morning I've been out and give the car a bit of a clean up and um, yeah, a bit of a tidy up. The ute's tidied up, I've washed the windscreen and um, topped up the washer fluid bottle because I, I bloody run out going home. It was just constantly, yeah, just on the, on the, um, Oh, look, I, I serviced it at 40,000 k's about two or three weeks ago and I filled it all up then. Um, but I didn't do it before we went away, so. Anyway, that's okay. Um, it's all done now, ready to rock and roll. Um, today, I've got to go in with Alan. Um, Alan's a secretary, club secretary. And um, yeah, we've got to go in. We have a meeting at some stage. I think it's this afternoon sometime. Um, Alan's going to ring me when he knows the exact time. And we're going into the agro trend grounds and we're having a meeting with the sound people um, that put the PA up and um, Mal Brown's his name. And yeah, he can set it up and we want roving mics and so we can go around and um, like if the tractor pulls on, um, someone with a microphone can be down there and you know, a bit of commentary or if there's you know, tractors balancing and things like that, we can actually, um, um, yeah, have, have someone walking around talking to people and you know if they want to um, talk to one of the engine boys and say oh tell us about this engine Barry or something like that and well they can chat about that and um, just just to keep a bit of commentary going um, the sponsors that are going to help you know um, help around the place um, we'll probably try and get a few ads over for them and things like that so apparently the meeting today is to give us a quote um, he has to find out what we want and so we probably need like two roving mics. Um, and apparently you can set the speakers up. Where do you want the speakers pointing? And things like that. So, um, so that's today, this afternoon. <coughs> My mate Rocket, he um, usually comes out for a chat, but I'll have to cancel that, the Sarvo. Um, yeah, because we have other stuff on. Um, but anyway, <laughs> we'll get it all. We'll get it all worked out. Um, at, at the meeting, um, they're talking about taking over roles in the club and um, at the AGM at the end of the year, which is December sometime, um, as with most clubs, all roles become open and, um, and yeah, we try and have a shuffle and get new people in to some roles if you can. Um, Alan's been secretary for ages and he's, um, Alan's wife's quite crook and um, he needs to He's a carer now, and he needs a bit of time um, to help out. I tell him some days, I say, geez, you look rude at Alan. <laughs> Just bloody, like he's, he's 80, um, coming up 80 in October. So, um, and yeah, he just looks worn out with all he's doing. Um, he's got a, and he's helping Robbie up north with the museum. He's helping Diane, you know, for her needs. Um, and he's helping me no end with the rally stuff and, um, he's got his finger on the pulse with everything in the club, so um, so he's stepping down. He, he's just uh, it's just wearing him out um, the the load. So um, we need to find a new secretary. Um, we have Helen. Helen's sort of an assistant secretary, but um, she helps him out by doing the minutes for the meeting and um, yeah, the meeting agendas, and she does a cracker of a job. Um, so yeah, that's taken some load. Um, but um, anyway, we'll see. Um, Nev is not going for president again. Um, he was telling us at the meeting and his Mrs. Margaret reckons no way is he doing that job again. <laughs> so, um, so that's coming up and um, I'm thinking I'll probably put my hand up seeing as I was the one pushing for this rally and he was dead against it. And um, so I might put my hat in the ring there um, see what the club, it's a club vote, so I, um, 
Yeah, since he didn't want the rally and he doesn't want to be president when it's on by the look of things, or, or he's just had enough of it. You know, he's done it for quite a few years now, so um, so he's not doing it again. He's no way. He reckons last year um, he only signed up because no one else wanted to have a go. So um, so anyway, it's up to us fellas to sort that out. Um, but I might put my hat in the ring there just as rally coordinator, um, that might come, that might work well, um, as in, um, it's better than having a rally coordinator or a few members want this rally and um, the big brass doesn't, so it's difficult. Um, yeah, Rob and Dorothy, Ma and Pa's Trust, they've put two grand into the kitty, so we've raised $5,000 for it so far, so that's great. Um, yeah, so anyway, it, it's going well. We're organising stuff all the time. We're getting little bits done, and I'm trying to do it at work, trying to find gaps, <laughs> gaps in the in the flow of traffic at work, so to get bits done. But I've I got out like the date. Those are on Facebook. Um, hopefully, they saw save the date come out last week, and um, the date's 9th and 10th of August 2025. It's two weeks before the national rally in Jindarian, which is about three hours west of us. So, um, yeah, that, that will either work for us or against us. Um, some people won't want to go to a rally one way, then head the other way, and others can come up, come to the Bundaberg one, they can park their gear in my place here and go have a look around the area for a couple of weeks, or a week, and then head over. So it may work with us or against us, but look, that's fine. Um, yeah, we'll just go with the flow there. Um, not much you can do. It's the only time we can get it in, so um, be good. <coughs> but look, that's about it. Um, yeah, I've been a bit lazy bastard, really, but <laughs> anyway, um, I'll go handheld. I'll just show you a quick little walk around of what I've done out the front on the Ford. I'll show you this engine here, what I've done there. I've done nothing on the Massey 20. I've done nothing with the boards. Um, the other day when it was raining, um, I dropped the Queensland Tractor Spares gazebo that was out the front and I've brought it in the shed here and I've assembled it in the shed again just to try and stretch it out a little bit and it was a bit better when I assembled it here so um, I'll leave it up for the next week. Um, if I do any painting it'll have to come down and be all wrapped up but um, yeah we'll leave it there but not next weekend, the weekend after is the Queensland Heritage Rally in Biloela so we'll be away from Thursday and we'll get back Sunday evening. Um, so that's a three day, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, usually Sunday after lunch everyone's packed up and gone. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to that. Um, it's going to be, um, Chris from the Fergie Club is coming up, um, he's president of the Harry Ferguson Tractor Club of Australia, he's coming up, bringing some merchandise and we're going to try and have a bit of a Fergie get together. Um, yeah, we don't know how many, we're just going to try for it and see. Um, see how we go. So if you've got a Fergie and you want to come along, any tractor, come along for a chat and um, yeah, you'll have a good time for sure. So, Okay, I'll stop rambling. Thanks very much for stopping by. Um, we'll catch you all next week, eh? See ya. Okay, here's the far more regular engine. We've got the crank in, but yeah, they're the little little squirters. We have the an oil manifold through here that has an oil pump goes down in there and this squirts oil, and as this comes around, it squirts into this little push, little cup there. Then that goes down in, and that's how they lubricate the bottom end of this engine. So, whoops, so I've just got the crank's very easy to turn, and um, yeah, I I have it. I fiddle with it until the con rod is free. Now, I might put another shim in there yet because what I like to do is when I turn the crank that way, I would like that to just still hang in the centre. You know, hang straight up and down. We see it, it goes with the crank a little bit. So I'd like that to just to stay put, so there might be another shim go in there yet. So, you know, that's what I'm doing there. I've got a couple of pistons done, but um, we'll go for a walk. Oh, you can't see that because of the lights. Now, the little Ford 2000. 
we have to have a talk about that. <laughs> now, I asked for some help to identify it through the week, last week, and James Brown, and, and look, I, I had quite a few messages about it, and yeah, very helpful, and um, that's what we've got, a great little community going. But it, it was pointed out to me that there was another number missing in here. So I showed you this 13M14, or 3M14, but if you look up further, you can see the letter B, 1012B. And, okay, the, the 3M14 means the 14th of December, 1973. The B21, whatever that is, that's just a serial number. But this number here has thrown us a bit of a curveball. Okay, so the B, we know in this dating code, the B, no, I'll leave that there, um, the B stands for 2000. So if B's 2000, C's 3000, D's 4000, and so on. So the 10, the 10 next to it, that says it's a general purpose tractor. So which we're happy with. It is a general purpose tractor. Then the one, two. Um, the one says it's diesel. Doesn't look like a buddy diesel. And the two means 540 PDO and B, I think was six speed from memory. Yes, B was six speed, I think it was. So, um, so what goes on there? Um, when you look at it, it doesn't look like it's had a new gearbox in it or anything like that. Like some of those bolts have never been undone, unless it was painted, I suppose. Um, so we're not sure. So, um, so the top number is B1012B. Then we have the date, the 3M14, and then we have the serial number. So. Bit of a funny one, not to worry though, but look, I've got the carby on, I've just uncovered it this morning. I've got the carby on. Um, you're not allowed to laugh at my, my grease nipple there. You gotta remember to grease your manifold. Um, what goes on there was, there was a little elbow here, and that had a vacuum tube down to the diaphragm here. So the new distributor that's coming, um, as a mechanical advance, not vacuum advance. So I didn't have an eighth BSP. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't have an eighth um, bung. So I put a grease nipple in there just to keep the wasps out and things like that. So, so yeah, I got, a, I got the new modern greasable inlet manifold. The holly carb I'd done up for Ian when, I, um, when he had it. Um, so yeah, I just tidied that up a bit and put it on. We're still waiting on the distributor. All this in through here, all the springs and all that, I just tidied it up a bit and popped it on. There was nothing nothing major there to look at. I need to put a tap in there yet. Um, round the other side here. Um, I've still got to put the rocker gear back in, but down, down in there, you can see the fuel pump's missing. It's a funny little lift pump. Um, and while it's nice and sunny out here, I might, I've put the Welsh plugs in the head. Um, I might tidy this up a little bit more yet and go there. I have an oil filter for it, and so we'll have an oil change. Um, yeah, but look, I've, that's all I got done for the whole week, really. Um, you can't get the bright hoses for this thing, really, so we're just going to do something here with a piece of tube and an elbow and get the water going up to where it's supposed to be there. Um, but yeah, I was talking to a bloke at Gainder yesterday about these hydraulic pumps and he said, <coughs> I mean, he knows a bit about them and he said those pumps last forever. Um, he said they're bloody good pumps. So he was telling me that people have replaced pumps but where it sits down into the side there somewhere, 
there's an O-ring, and that O-ring goes hard, and so the pump doesn't want to um, doesn't want to suck. It sucks air, so people actually replace the pump when they don't need to. So we'll find out about that. Um, but I will get the rocker gear back on today and tidy it up, and that way I can put the tappet cover back on and um, button it up and. I'm going to cut a little gasket for the fuel pump there. Um, I'm going to organise a new exhaust manifold. I'm not going to fiddle with that. Um, it's just not worth the mucking around really, so we'll see how we go. Um, and the fuel system, well she's a doozy. It comes from the tank through a glass bowl up to the lift pump back around or something. I've, I've got to sort that out. I've got a couple of pictures of it. Um, it's not, yeah, I'm going to have a couple of bits of rubber hose in the middle, I think, just to um, have that. But um, I, am, I am pushing forward trying to get this thing running. And once it's running, I can um, give you a report on um, what I need to do from there, if anything. Um, who knows, it might all just bloody work. And, oh, Sparex, an agri line and quality tractor parts and all, they have, um, they have new tops for these so I noticed the 4600 out the back it has the same top cover and they share one so that's interesting um, that's a little gasket that's what I got a copy for the um, fuel pump that's a bit of the old gasket so we'll copy that get that happening and yeah originally it had like these old fuel taps and oh, it was a bit of a mess so Anyway, we'll sort it out. I'll sit it in the sun today. Um, they reckon rain, but yeah, uh, plenty of blue sky around when you look. So it might just be a nice day. Who knows? So there you go. So so anyway, I've got a Ford 2000 diesel with a petrol engine in it. So we'll work with that, eh? All right. See yous.